Hi, I'm Scott Whitley, and here are my top five tips to take your bass pick playing to the next level. Tip number one. Choose the pick that's right for you. Picks, also known as plectrums, come in various shapes, sizes and thicknesses, and in a variety of different materials. It's surprising how much these variables affect the tone of your bass and how different one pick feels to play with compared to the next. To get started, just use what you have on hand. But as picks are usually relatively inexpensive, I encourage you to experiment and see what works well for you. Here are a few general things to help you with pick choice. Thinner picks are usually more flexible and can be gripped more firmly than thicker ones. They produce a brighter tone and in my experience are easier to play with on bass, especially when playing faster and more demanding parts. Thinner picks are a great choice for rock, punk, fusion, metal, funk, two, three. and pretty much anywhere you require an immediate upfront tone. Thicker picks are generally much less flexible than thinner picks and consequently have to be held looser in the hand. This increases the risk of dropping your pick or your pick spinning round while you're playing, especially when you consider the amount of force you need to get thick bass strings in motion. Having said that, the tone produced by using thicker picks is generally warmer and more well-rounded. The material a pick is made from also affects the tone. Harder materials such as polycarb, celluloid and metal will generally create a brighter, more articulate and immediate tone. For the ultimate in fast attack, in your face pick playing, you choose a thin pick made from a hard material. Softer materials such as felt, wood, nylon and delrin will produce a softer, quieter tone. Choose a thicker pick made from one of these materials for the ultimate fat, warm and mellow pick playing tone. And finally, let's talk about the shape and the size of the pick. Honestly, when it comes to pick, shape and size, there are so many variables that I just couldn't cover it all in this one video. However, a couple of general rules of thumb are that a pick with a sharper point will have a more immediate attack, whereas a more rounded point produces a slightly softer attack. And large picks are more forgiving in terms of grip and will usually flex more than a smaller pick made from the same thickness of material. I'd recommend starting with average sized teardrop shaped picks like these. My own personal favorite picks by far are these Fred Kelly poly flat picks. The attack is incredibly fast when compared to other picks, which really suits my style of playing. I've put together an in-depth bass pick roundup for you, and the link is in the description below the video. Check it out. Tip number two. Perfect your grip. There's no right or wrong way to hold a pick, and again, I'm a big believer in experimentation and thinking outside the box. This is how innovation is born. However, here are a few general thoughts and tips to get you started or improve your existing approach. The most common way to grip a pick is between your thumb and your index finger. I've seen many players do this with their index finger extended like this, but I prefer to have my index finger slightly crooked like this. How firmly you grip the pick is largely dependent on how flexible the pick is. A very thin, flexible pick will need to be gripped relatively firmly to produce any kind of volume, whereas a thick one will require a much looser, more delicate grip if you don't want to rip the strings right off your bass. One issue a lot of pick players face sometimes, including myself, is the pick spinning round as you play, where instead of having the point sticking out toward the strings like that, you end up with the back end of the pick sticking out. And while you can usually still continue to play like this, it does affect the feel and the tone a lot, and it's not ideal. I've tried a bunch of different solutions to this, including using picks that have a more textured surface, and it's not uncommon for players to actually score the surface of the picks with a craft knife. However, by far the most effective solution I've found, particularly when you're on stage and you're sweating and things get even more slippy, is using a product called Pick Honey. You simply apply the tiniest amount of this stuff 
to your index finger and your thumb and you kind of rub it together and it just works. That pick isn't going anywhere. So this stuff also works really well if you find you're frequently dropping your pick. Ultimately though, the more you practice playing with the pick, the less these things will be a concern as your technique improves over time. Tip number three. Anchor your hand. I've watched a lot of players new to pick playing approach the technique like this. But for ultimate ease and control, I find it best to anchor your hand to the base in some way. In fact, this is actually true for most bass playing techniques. Depending upon where you pluck the strings, you'll get a different tone. If you play up near the neck, you'll find the sound fatter, warmer and smoother. Whereas if you play near the bridge, the sound is tighter, more focused and somewhat brighter. I spend most of my time around this area when I'm playing with the pick and only occasionally moving towards the neck for softer passages or ballads, as do many other bassists. But use your ears and go with what suits your style. But the important thing is, whichever position you find yourself in when you're playing with a pick, try and find some way of anchoring your hand. One of the reasons I like to play around this bridge area is you can rest your palm on the bridge itself. Um, you want to be staying behind the saddles, so kind of like this side of where the strings go over the saddles. Otherwise, you'll mute the strings. More on that in a minute. So it works like this. You rest your palm there and then just bring your hand in and away you go. And in doing that, I'm not kind of floating around in midair, just kind of hoping I kind of get the string, you know. I've got contact with the bass and it makes everything so much more definite, precise and easy. And if you find yourself playing in this sort of neck area of the bass, you can still anchor your hand to the bass, but you're going to have to do things a little bit differently. The way I do it is I use my pinky and my third finger, my ring finger on my right hand, and I lightly touch them onto the body. On this one, it feels kind of cool to kind of lock in to that pickup area there. But if you haven't got a pickup there or you've got really long fingers or something, then just touching the body is enough. And then you've got all this range of motion. You can still be really flexible and play around. And that kind of looks like this. Tip number four. Use palm muting. Palm muting for me is like pick plane's secret weapon. Palm muting is a hugely useful tool and is so easily available when you're playing with a pick. Palm muting can be used to change the actual shape of the notes you play, which creates this whole new palette of musical feels and can create insanely powerful dynamics. For example, you can go from this to this and anywhere in between. Palm muting does require that you are mostly playing around the bridge area. To get started, what you need to do is get the fleshy part of your palm here and rest that on the bridge just behind the saddles, like this. Then as you play, you slide your hand slowly towards the neck, and as you go, you'll hear the muting start to kick in. Check it out. And back again. And you can get really extreme with it. Check it out. And eventually, you kind of lose the note, right? So if I play now, it's kind of cool, but I'm not hearing very clear notes, right? So just experiment and see what sounds good to you. Do bear in mind that you don't need to mute all the strings at once with your palm, rather just the string that you're playing at any given moment. And all you do is you kind of ride your hand down and up like this as you cross the strings. So check it out. My favorite ways of using palm muting are to create huge dynamics. 
playing funk. Playing rock and roll and 60s music. And for playing kind of dirty R&B grooves, that sort of thing. Tip number five. Use alternating picking. Using downstrokes only with a pick is actually a very viable and powerful approach and is used an awful lot in pop and rock lines. But alternating picking is really useful when attempting faster lines or heavily syncopated rhythms and or when playing for extended periods. Start by picking just one note and alternating between down and up strokes. Start very slowly and with a drum machine or metronome so you can really analyse what you're doing and perfect your technique and avoid baking bad habits into your muscle memory. Compare the tone and volume of your downstrokes compared to your upstrokes and make micro adjustments until they sound as even as possible. Then, and only then, increase the tempo slightly and then repeat the process. Once you have your basic alternating picking down, it's time to take it for a test drive. Simply play anything and everything you can using the alternating picking technique in order to master it further and further. To do this, you can choose anything you like. For example, songs you already know, scales and arpeggios, licks, whatever. Don't forget to check out my bass pick roundup. The link is in the description below. It would help me massively if you please smash like, hit subscribe, or and be sure to click on the grey bell icon so you get notified whenever I make a new video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.